My name is Russ Homans with Phoenix Sales. We distribute Renew Electronics HMI PLC combination devices as well as micro PLCs and the I.O. expansion modules for these products. I'd like to take a few minutes today to go over some features and how-tos of using FlexiSoft software used for programming these devices. Once FlexiSoft has been started and you start your new project, we'll be able to navigate now through the project. So this area that you see here is the project tree where you can go through different sections like screens. You can click on the expand to see different screens that you have. You can create new screens here. So if you click on screen one, you'll see that it shows up on the right side. If you expand that again, you can define the keys for that screen. You can define the tasks for that screen. You can see there's numeric keypads, hex keypads, bit. Uh, you can define templates under screens that can be used on all screens. There's a logic blocks section here that you can click on. There's power up logic blocks that only run one time. And then there are the main logic blocks. These logic blocks are running all the time. So you can have 10, 15, 20 blocks under this main section. There's subroutine ladder blocks that you can run. There are timed interrupt ladder blocks that can run on a set cycle. Below this we have our I.O. allocation where we can define which I.O. modules we're using. So we have the base unit which is the FP4035TE and then under that we have the expansion modules and on this product we have three slots on the back of the FP4035 so we can define which I.O. modules we have. So depending on your electrical connections that you need and the sensors that you have, you can define which I.O. modules you have on the back of the unit. So you can see the, the list is pretty expansive uh, and what's available. So we can look at the data window. The data window allows us to automatically define preset values for all of our registers. So if we want a T0 to start with an, an initial value of 15, we'll type 15 in there. So now when this is down when this program is downloaded to the unit, T0 will be set to 15. You can look at the different keys that can be defined for this project and these are global keys so they will work on every screen we have press press tasks pressed tasks and release tasks and we can define uh, the tasks for these different states you can see a list of tasks there that are available We can also define project tasks. So these tasks will start uh, with a power on. The task will just run one time. And then there's also global tasks. These tasks will run at all times as the application is running on the, on the device. So there's a list of different tags that you can enter. So depending on which tag you choose and task, you get different options. We have our tag database. Tag database uh, that you see here is just the predefined tag database for the for the initial project that we started. So we have um, just a template of tags here. These are populated automatically. You can add tags in this as well. We have a network configuration that we can uh, define different nodes. We have a alarms screen here for defining what alarms you need for for your application so here we have 16 random words and you can define each word and the the alarms that go with those words so you can define a tag that is an alarm tag we also have a powerful data logger And this data logger allows us to, to define up to four groups of 
uh, of logging families. So if we choose one here, you'll see we have group one. Now we can choose the logging mode, so we can do power up, start stop time, key task, logging with runtime frequency, a bit task, and an event based logging. This is very powerful that you can define exactly when you want this group of tags to be logged. So you can have another group that logs in a different way. Then we have languages. So here my computer actually only has English language, but if you wanted to target this application to a Japanese language, you could you could define that here and just by writing a different value to SW1 you can declare a new language at runtime on the device. So we're going to take a look at our ladder blocks and we have IO instructions, data transfer, math, compare, logic, conversion, timer, counter, program control, functions, special instructions. So all these different tasks can be put into the ladder editor there. We can also see that there's buttons that these buttons change if we're in screens. So we can do clock objects, advanced objects, edit data, show data. And we can put these different objects on the screen. And with this there'll be a, a, a property screen that shows up on the right side that allows us to define these. You can see here this is the screen properties block here. So this allows us to define some of the properties of the screen. We can change the background color. We can give the screen a different name. This is screen number one, so we could change that screen number. Screen properties. We could password protect the screen. So this allows us to edit the screen properties. Now if we click on the button that's on the screen, you'll see that this properties window changes and this allows us to change the properties of that individual button. You can define different uh, the, the look of the button and, and how you want that to look. Uh, you can define the tags that this button targets. We'll also go to the ladder block again and again we have a properties window that shows for the different elements that you have in your ladder block. So here we have a, a greater than or equal to and then here we have a timer, an on timer and you can see the individual instructions that are allowed there.